My approach to managing Crohn's disease in 2025. The right time to start therapy, effective therapy in Crohn's disease is early. And early means very early. And for the majority of patients, that means within the first month of diagnosis. But what does this look like in practice? Actually, for a patient with newly diagnosed, mild or mild to moderate Crohn's disease without any complications, I would consider induction therapy, of course it'd be desonide, enteral nutrition, six to eight weeks, for example, and then monitor carefully bloods, CRP has to be less than five, calprotectin must be less than 250 at the very least, and do that every couple of months for the first year. And if at the end of that first year, the calprotectin is well within target, CRP down, patient feels well, I might be happy to keep going with no other therapy moving forwards. If not, we move on to the next step. And the next step is moderate Crohn's disease without any complications. The standard patient that presents with colonic Crohn's disease, no stricture, no fistula, or the same with uncomplicated small bowel disease. For a lot of these people, we give adalimumab. Biosimilar adalimumab is cheap, it's very cost effective, it tends to be well tolerated, and for most patients, the persistence is pretty good as monotherapy. But it's not perfect. And we know there are problems with anti-TNF drugs when news like this, notably persistence and sequencing. And so, with biosimilar stokinumab available now, we will use that for some people, noting it's still three or four times the cost of biosimilar adalimumab, or infliximab and azathioprine. And infliximab and azathioprine is our go-to for those patients with moderate to severe Crohn's disease or with fistulizing Crohn's disease. And as per the profile protocol, I think it's a fantastic option for many, many of our patients. Infliximab plus full dose azathioprine, keep it going at least for a year before you consider reducing and perhaps withdrawing the azathioprine thereafter. Fistulizing patients, we want to keep going with the infliction lab and the azathioprine pretty much long term. What else? The P19s, I hear you say. Well, yes. Rizinkizumab, soon to come gazelkumab. Maybe we'll see mirakizumab for Crohn's too. First line, newly diagnosed, moderately active Crohn's disease. I would love to use rizinkizumab or gazelkumab. Currently in the NHS, that's not practicable because it's more expensive but I know that's a widespread approach elsewhere in the world where that's not the case. So let's say you start with an anti-TNF first. Could be infliximab and azathioprine, could be adalimumab. What about after that? Well, usually we're going to another mechanism of action. And today, that means for most people going to rizinkizumab, and for many, it's going to oop adacitinib. We don't yet have gazelkumab on the market for Crohn's disease, but that's coming this summer. Which, well, it'll depend a bit on the patient phenotype. We might veer slightly towards upadacitinib for a fistulizing phenotype where we want a rapid onset of action, perhaps with more colonic disease, but we will use it in all Crohn's disease phenotypes. Rizinkizumab, we're having great success, including in people who have failed ustekinumab at standard and at accelerated dosing. A couple of other points. Vedalizumab still fits into the algorithm. I have many people still on Vedalizumab for Crohn's disease, but it probably fits best earlier, and then it falls into the same trap for us as the P19s at the moment, where it's just not quite cost-effective enough. What about dosing? A note about dosing here. I am not a big fan of going above standard dosing of the non-anti-TNF advanced therapies. What does that mean? Well, with vedalizumab, it's never been clear whether or not the licensed four weekly dosing is adding anything at top of eight weekly dosing. So we don't typically use it anymore, although there are exceptions. What about ustekinumab? Well, for a long time, we didn't have options. So we did escalate our patients from eight weekly to six or four weekly therapy. And that was very expensive. The data to support its effectiveness 
it's always been a bit mixed. The power study from Germany a couple of years ago attempted to address this, but didn't quite come up with what we needed. What do we have next? We had a big jet aid study at ECHO this year, which showed that even when you went for IV reinduction and then for weekly therapy, you didn't get much bang for your buck. So if you're failing eight weekly ustekinumab, move on. And moving to Rizinkizumab looks like an excellent option today because that would also be a good option tomorrow for these patients. What about if you're failing eight weekly Rizinkizumab? Should you go to four weekly Rizinkizumab? For us, that's not an option. Something I promised that we wouldn't do. There is no data to support that at the moment. Upalacitinib, 12 weeks at 45 milligrams up to 16 for ulcerative colitis, maybe up to 24 in Crohn's disease, but beyond that, 30 milligram maintenance dose. And to me, I am not particularly comfortable with long-term dosing at doses greater than 30 milligrams once daily for patients. So actually instead, if I have a patient who is refractory and has been failing to respond on standard dosing of these newer drugs, I would prefer to go to an advanced combination therapy strategy often using standard dose Rizinkizumab at eight weekly plus Upadacitinib, which we may start at 45 mg for the 12 weeks, and then try and drop down actually to the 15 milligram once daily dose. We have a number of patients, noting this is all off license, who are doing very well on that combination strategy moving forward, having been very stuck for a while before that. So there we are. Those really are, to my, to my mind, the key aims. Mild to moderate, don't be afraid to give induction therapy and then nothing, monitor, see what's happening, make sure that calprotectin is staying at the very least below 250 and the CRP less than five. Moderate patients without risk factors, well, you can use adalimab, you can use biosimilar ustekinumab. If you can, you can use uh, vedalizumab, or perhaps better, rizinkizumab or gazelkimab. If your patient has a severe phenotype, a moderate to severe phenotype, has fistulizing disease, or in any of the moderate, you can do very little wrong with infliximab plus azathioprine in combination as per profile started early. Early is within a month of diagnosis. And then after TNF failure, we're moving to rizinkizumab or to upadacitinib. No 5-ASA, minimal steroid, no smoking, and no azathioprine or methotrexate monotherapy in the modern era. That's it eight minutes on how to manage Crohn's disease. The cheat sheet, I'll drop in the notes below. Thanks for now. Goodbye.